This old building belongs to a family farm in Austria and would have been used for storage and animals. It's small and awkwardly shaped, but the owner really wanted to see how it could be turned into a tiny house for an elderly relative or a future holiday let. There are several buildings on this farm, but the owner suspects that this one is the oldest. It's a simple, traditional form with a pitched roof, thick stone walls and timber cladding to one end. There are windows on the west and north walls and a door at each end to the north and south. Inside you just have one large room and two smaller ones at the north end. All of the ceilings are vaulted and this is one of the main features that the owner of the building really likes. Above this there is a storage space within the roof structure that is accessed externally via these end openings. You can see the top of the vaulted ceilings in here and that the tie beams are quite low in relation to them, so head heights mean this probably couldn't be a habitable space. So making this an inviting space is going to be one of the key challenges that I have here. You can fit accommodation to a building of this size, but if you don't address the quality of that living space, then it's just not going to feel very nice. So my priority from the outset is to bring in light and views. This south end will get the best quality of sunlight throughout the day and also has lovely open views over the surrounding fields. So somehow I have to create better access to that. These walls are really thick and of a rubble construction and these brick vaulted ceilings look solid but improvised so I don't want to alter this building too much in case it weakens it and you end up losing the main thing you're trying to hold on to which is the existing fabric. If we're trying to retain these vaulted ceilings then that rules out bringing in any light from above. So if possible I want to just propose the introduction of two windows at this south end one either side of the door to mirror the north gable. I would also try and lower the sill heights of these west windows. The main space has an area of about 25 square meters in which to fit the bedroom, kitchen, living and dining, which is very tight. So to capitalize on the introduction of new windows at this end, I'm gonna propose a small extension to the south that will create a living space to maximize the access to these views and warmth and draw them in to be part of the main space. One of the reasons I love architecture is that it's a science as well as an art and there is as much engineering and technology in it as there is artistic imagination. That's why I want to introduce Brilliant. If you are a lifelong learner like me and enjoy staying up to date by developing new skills, Brilliant is the best way to learn maths, data science and computer science interactively. So you could cover topics like AI, data analysis or engineering in a rewarding, accessible environment. I'm a visual learner and find that I can process information best when it's broken down into bite-sized illustrated steps. And it's this interactivity which makes Brilliant so effective for learning advanced concepts while starting with the basics. I've just completed the module on exploring data visually, which I loved because analysis is a big part of architecture and the first step in any design. And next, I'm going to do the Thinking in Code course because it's about designing simple programs to solve real world problems, which interests me and could help future proof my career development. If you'd like to join me in trying out everything Brilliant has to offer, you can do this for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Gemma or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you to do this will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So don't miss that chance. In such a tiny building where there are only a handful of features that give it its visual identity, I think any new addition needs to double down on the existing architectural language rather than imposing something new and different. So at this south end, the main feature is this timber clad overhang and the stone wall beneath it. If this is drawn outwards, it starts to create a covered external area, which could be really nice to sit in and be sheltered from the weather. So I'd like to keep that and only enclose about half of the covered area to become part of the interior. So you have a small extension with a pitched roof over it. But there's no reason why you'd have to have a flat ceiling over that and just empty space above. The roof space over the existing building is not tall enough to be able to walk about in, so it would continue as storage space with a new floor to cover over and insulate the vaulted areas. 
To access that internally, you'd either need to make an opening in one of those vaulted ceilings, which would likely mean having to replace the whole ceiling, or you can continue to access it from the end, but now as part of the interior. I think integrating a ladder into this wall that takes you up to a hatch is an interesting way of continuing the function and language of the original building without imposing on this space too much. So moving into the main space, I've removed the small enclosure at this end as it doesn't seem structural to me and serves no obvious purpose, which creates a more regular space to work with. With the size it is, I'm going to consider it a studio space and I'm not going to close the bedroom off. And that also means the whole room benefits from these windows. There's a natural break in the space with this arch, so creating a slatted partition splits up the room a little bit so you don't feel too much like you're sleeping in the kitchen. I've shown these west windows with their sills lowered slightly so that they integrate better with the room's uses. In the kitchen, that means these deep sills almost add to the worktop space to maximize that. And I think this kitchen arrangement would provide a good amount of space to be used day by day. I've shown the walls lined with timber as I think this space really needs to feel cozy, especially in the winter. And I think natural timber really helps with that. It's also a great way of integrating hidden storage so that any little opportunities for recesses and shelves can be capitalized on. I've just lined out this east wall with enough depth for some shallow storage that can hide away any clutter and also include some bookshelves and decorative areas. That ties in with the hearth to create some log storage for a wood burner in the darkest part of the building. So here I've created a kind of timber-lined corridor rather than holding onto the existing door opening. And that's because I want to use this end room for lots of storage and have proposed some deep cupboards for this purpose. You'd have a utility cupboard with plenty of shelves above. And as with most of my projects, you'd probably put a combi boiler in here. And next to that would be all of your clothes storage. This space would also double as an entrance area to keep your shoes and your coats. And next to it is a good sized shower room, again with a bit of storage space on this service wall. So I hope this gives you lots of ideas for creating a small single story home from a traditional building. If you enjoyed this, please do share my videos and encourage others to subscribe so that I can keep making them and of course do keep sending me any strange or small historic buildings that you'd like to see me transform. <laughs>